pencils, scissors, needles, sewing machines flash in exciting activity that Hollywood stars may be arrayed in glamorous glory. Paramount's wardrobe department is electric with industry. Miles of lace, satin, velvet, cloth of gold go into the making of creations which set the world's fashion trends. Behind this surge of craftsmanship is the artist who inspires these creations. Let us visit Travis Banton's office, where the famous designer is receiving a visit from Miss Kathleen Howard, noted actress, and herself a fashion expert. I've just been watching Marlena Dietrich in a new picture. Her clothes are simply marvelous, Travis. Oh, I am so glad you like them. Did you see this white fringed one that she wears in the carnival sequence? Yes, and I was delighted to welcome fringes back again. There's nothing more flattering to a woman. I enjoyed using them too, particularly as I didn't have to do it in the literal Spanish costume way, but could uh, use them inspirationally, you know? Well, you've certainly succeeded, Travis. I never saw Miss Dietrich look more beautiful. I don't see how Marlena kept that huge square comb in her hair, weighted down as it was by that waterfall of fringe. When she walked, the rhythm of the fringes from the tip of her comb to her slippers was exceedingly graceful. I love the crinolines Joan Bennett and uh, Gail Patrick wear in Mississippi. Yes, uh, and don't you think they have a very definite influence on the styles of today? I certainly do. Uh, for instance, this dress of, of Joan Bennett's, which is a, a perfect period dress. It's 1860. But if you took the crinoline or the hoop out of it, it would be a, a Why, regular... Why, she could wear it today. Yes, yeah, just a regular yeah. modern evening dress for a debutante. Absolutely. Wouldn't any girl adore to wear Gail Patrick's cream-colored tulle with its flattering ruffles and garlands of gardenias? I was so surprised when she turned round to see that the entire back of her head was covered with gardenias instead of curls. Fluffy costumes seem to demand flowers in the hair to complete them. I was very much struck by this dress Carol Lombard wears in Roomba. How did you achieve this slender, clinging silhouette against this wide, flaring coat, Travis? Well, uh, I'll tell you. I was so tired of that eternal bias thing that women have been wearing and wearing and wearing for the last two or three years. Yes. So uh, I tried to achieve it in a different way and go back to the drapery of 1913 and 1914, you know? Yes. When the drapery was almost the universal thing. Yes. And by now I find it's very new looking. Yes, and it, uh, at the same time the woman is slender. Yes, because after all, women are always going to be slender if they oh. can have their way, aren't they? Of course. Isn't it a shame that the color can't be registered in that pink satin evening gown? The crisscross treatment on the shoulders and the short tunic look almost like living sculpture on Miss Lombard's lovely figure. And the little satin wrap bordered in sable which she slipped over her shoulders was charming. Miss Lombard told me she calls the gown with the large midnight blue spangles her savage dress. She said it was inspired by the primitive savages who go about with all their worldly wealth sewn on their clothes. That dress is divine in motion. I liked the clever manipulation of bulk in Carol's black suit. The Gallia coat accented at its severe neckline by deep red carnations was most becoming. And the way it bulges out in just the right places gives it such smart swagger. Miss Lombard wears the off-the-face hat most successfully. No wonder she copied this costume for her trip to New York. It's charming. You are so right to use magnificent fabrics in pictures, as you have in Miss Lombard's green and gold negligee. The camera records the richness so faithfully, especially where it's draped up in front. What would we do without metal for evening coats? Just the thing for any gala occasion. When I saw Miss Lombard first, sitting in the box removing her wrap, I thought she was wearing a gown of grey chiffon with sequined shoulder straps. But when the plot transplants her suddenly to the stage, I saw that the skirt was made of a million silver spangles. As she danced the rumba so gracefully, I realized how clever the skirt length was and the use of spangles. They accentuated every graceful movement of the dance. Claudette Colbert, wearing one of her costumes from the Gilded Lily, looked entrancing. The gown was yellow chiffon with a dramatic feather treatment. I could see that the skirt was made of endless yards of chiffon, but this didn't handicap her movements in the least. Of course, I realize that you exaggerated this gown for story purposes, but it undoubtedly has fashion significance, especially for dance dresses. You were right when you told me to watch for that black beaded gown. It's the most beautiful one I've ever seen. So slender and so flattering. And that glorious white fox cape. No wonder she seemed to revel in its luxury. Miss Colbert's white cabaret costume intrigued me because at first glimpse, I thought it was another crinoline. 
Then I discovered that you'd used rows of vulture feathers, making it a very modern Rob de Steel. And the way that half million dollars worth of jewels registered was well worth the vigilance of the detectives who were guarding them. I also saw her wearing a black wool and silver fox formal suit with a silver blouse. Fur always looks doubly important on the screen, don't you think so? And there is nothing more suitable than a little tricorn hat topping a huge fur collar. When I saw the one and only Mae West enacting a scene for How Am I Doing, I remembered the avalanche of talk she started in the fashion world in She Done Him Wrong. It's amazing how this fad has persisted in both America and Europe. And now that she has gone modern, her clothes are as typically Mae Westian as the ones she made famous at that time. The glittering beaded fabrics, the lavish fur treatment, and the inevitable large hats she is wearing in this new picture all combine in stressing her vivid personality. But I simply had to see more of Miss Dietrich, so I slipped back to the Devil is a Woman set and found her wearing the most romantic black costume. It was the one with a large velvet hat. Her black lace gloves made her hands even more graceful than ever, and such interesting pearl jewellery. I recognised the cape as the one for which you had the lace made right here in the studio, copied from a rare piece found among the heirlooms of one of our oldest Spanish families. There is little which you cannot do in Hollywood when it comes to achieving the effect you desire, is there? And no wonder the carnation fad has had an instantaneous acceptance. The clusters she wears in her hair are so indescribably flattering. How pretty the girls will look when they follow her example. The colouring of the peasant costume, with its lipstick red blouse and blue and white dotted skirt, is typical of so many Spanish paintings. The carnival costume which she wears when the hero first sees her is delightfully imaginative. The use of veiling and black chenille dots seems to supply exactly the right amount of excitement for that scene. When I saw Marlena wearing one of the little lace fascinators, it was like a promise fulfilled. From the moment you told me about them, I had hoped to see her haunting beauty enhanced by this simple but flattering fad. There's such a practical side to their use. At last, a way to keep one's hair in place in going to and from a party. Her coiffures in this picture are entrancing, especially the one where her hair is coiled into a low roll in the back of her neck and ornamented with another piece of that emerald and pearl jewellery you seem to design just as easily as the costumes. The shadows and sunlight of Spain were dramatised in that taffeta cape spangled in black and the huge taffeta hat. The lace veil was drama personified. All through the picture, the continued use of lace reminded me that this is the most typically luxurious material of the fastidious woman. Marlena reminded me of a great white peacock with its tail spread in that white lace gown with the enormous hat. She told me that the lace was a priceless heirloom which you had sacrilegiously cut to drape it flatly about her shoulders, avoiding that clumsy look which even lace can have if not handled skillfully. The wrist treatment of this gown intrigued me enormously and I saw that the frills were made of layers of finely accordion pleated satin used with the crepe side out. Here again I was reminded that you used carnations with every single costume, varying their colour and placing. It isn't surprising that this Spanish theme has already had an international fashion influence, for there is so much that is flattering and adaptable about the costumes Miss Dietrich is wearing in The Devil is a Woman. I've enjoyed this preview of clothes tremendously and I shall look forward to my next visit and more beautiful clothes.